In this lecture, we are going finally to prove that every vector bundle over a contractible manifold is always trivial. And in order to show this result, we are going to introduce a new construction, the pullback of a vector bundle by a continuous map. So we want to know if there exists a manifold such that every vector bundle over M is necessarily trivial, right? And we are going to give a sufficient condition, as I announced already, a, a, vector, a vector bundle over a contractible manifold is always trivial. So in order to show that a vector bundle of our, over a contractible manifold is always trivial, we are going to introduce a new construction, namely the pullback of a vector bundle by a continuous map. Consider a vector bundle psi PEN, where N is the base of our, the basis space of our vector bundle, and let F be a continuous map from M to M. Okay, so this map over here is continuous. The pullback vector bundle, okay, is vector bundle defined over M, okay, over the domain of the map F. So we have, uh, we replace as the basis space N with M, okay? And that essentially satisfies that the fiber of uh, the pullback over the point X in the manifold M is just the fiber uh, of the vector bundle psi, okay, over the point f of x, okay? We want to be a little bit more precise. If we consider phi u a vector bundle chart of psi, we can actually define a vector bundle chart of the pullback. And uh, what happens is that uh, for this vector bundle chart, we have associated uh, a set of uh, maps of linear isomorphisms for x in u. And phi of x is a linear isomorphism from the fiber of our vector bundle psi at x and rn. Right. If we consider this vector bundle chart, we can actually uh, define in a narrow way a vector bundle chart for the pullback. The vector bundle chart associated to this one is the following. We consider psi that we are going to define in, in just a few seconds. And the domain of the chart is going to be just the preimage of u by f. So we have essentially to give this uh, family psi x, where x now belongs to the preimage of u, right? And psi x is going to be a linear isomorphism between the fiber of the pullback at the point x and rn. But this fiber of the pullback at the point X is just E, the, the fiber of psi at the point F of X. So we just define psi of X as being equal to phi of F, F of X for every X in the preimage of U. And this gives a vector bundle chart. It is very easy to check that out. So for every vector bundle chart of psi, we can define a vector bundle chart of the pullback, right? And as I said, psi of x, uh, psi of, uh, this is the chart phi u, we can define associated to that chart, a chart psi defined in the preimage of u of uh, eta, which is going to be just the pullback vector bundle, such that psi of x is just by definition phi of f of x. And that provides a vector bundle chart for the pullback, okay? What happens, right, 
is that uh, instead of considering vector bundle charts, we can also give vector bundles by just describing their transition functions. So we can consider actually to uh, vector bundle charts phi i defined in ui and phi j defined in uj that those are vector bundle charts of psi, right? And to those we can associate uh, just by considering the construction described here two vector bundle charts for the pullback, right? Okay, and this should be the second one. What happens is that we can consider the transition function between these two uh, vector bundle charts. Obviously, in the case of the two first uh, vector bundle charts that are vector, vector bundle charts for psi, the transition function is a map defined in the intersection of ui and uj and with values in the linear group. Here, for the induced vector bundle charts for the pullback, what we're going to have as a transition function, it's going to be uh, a map between the intersection of the preimages of ui and uj by the map f and the linear group. And indeed, that transition function is going to be just the composition of f and gie. So essentially, transition functions are the pullback of the transition functions. It's another way of defining the pullback of a vector bundle by a continuous map. Let us consider here a morphism capital F between vector bundles that covers a continuous map small f between differentiable manifolds. To the left, we have the projection associated to the first vector bundle, and to the right, the projection associated to the second vector bundle. Right? And now we can actually define here a morphism capital H of vector bundles over the identity of M such that this diagram commutes. And how we do this? We have that Fx is actually a linear transformation between eta x, uh, the, the fiber of eta at the point x, and psi, the fiber of uh, psi at the point f of x, because uh, this morphism covers the map f, right? What we want to define is h, okay, which has to be a morphism between the fiber of eta at the point x and the fiber of the pullback also at the point x because capital H is going to cover the identity map. But by definition, this is just the fiber of psi at the point f x. So we can define a h x as uh, being equal, the capital H uh, of x equal to capital F of x for every x in M. And then, uh, as a consequence, this diagram that we obtain here is commutative. And this, in many cases, is a good reduction because uh, we can actually, in order to study the properties of this morphism capital F, to reduce that study to the properties of capital H, which is a little bit simpler because now this is a morphism that covers not any differentiable map or any continuous map F, but that covers the identity map. So we have simplified a little bit the setting. Now uh, we have this theorem, which is very interesting. 
and we are going to use actually this theorem to prove that any vector bundle over a contractible uh, space over a contractible manifold is always trivial, okay? The theorem says that if we have F and G homotopic maps and we consider a vector bundle psi over N, then the pullback of psi by F and the pullback of psi by G are indeed isomorphic. And in particular, the pullback of psi is trivial if G is constant, okay? Why is this true? If these two maps are homotopic, that implies that we have a homotopy, uh, okay, capital F from M times the closed interval zero one to N such that capital F applied to X zero is a small f applied to, a small f applied to X, yes, and capital F applied to x1 is a small g applied to x. And this happens for every point x in M, right? Now, uh, we can consider the pullback by capital F of psi. This is a vector bundle, of course. But it is a vector bundle over the manifold m times the closed interval. And we know that in this case, the restriction of this vector bundle to m times zero is isomorphic to the restriction of the vector bundle to m times one. So let we have uh, this property. But let us uh, realize now that when this second component is equal to zero, then capital F is equal to a small f. And when the second component is equal to one, then capital F is equal to small g. So in particular, what we get is that the pullback of psi by f is gonna be isomorphic to the pullback of psi by g, proving the theorem. Of course, if g is constant, what we have is that this pullback is trivial. Indeed, what happens is that if we have g, which is a map from m to n that sends every point x into the same point, let's say y0, and we consider a vector bundle over M, something like this, uh, we can consider um, a vector bundle chart for a site. Okay, for psi, and obviously we are going to require that y0 belongs to u. And now, if we consider uh, psi uh, associated to this chart, we're gonna have a chart psi, uh, the preimage of u by g, but the preimage of u by g is the whole m. So we have a vector bundle chart that is defined in the whole m, and this implies that uh, our vector bundle is trivial. So the pullback of a vector bundle by a constant map is always a trivial vector bundle, okay? So in particular, what we get here is that if, uh, if F is actually homotopic to a constant map, what we have is that the pullback of psi is going to be isomorphic to a trivial vector bundle. And in particular, it is a trivial vector bundle, right? 
What we deduce as an immediate corollary of the previous theorem is that every vector bundle over a contractible manifold is trivial because uh, a manifold M is contractible if the identity map of M is homotopic to a constant map. Okay, C. And what happens here is that in such a case, the pullback by the identity map of psi of any vector bundle over M is still equal to psi, but this is equal to the pullback of psi by a constant map. And in particular, sorry, this should be an isomorphism, but, and this uh, vector bundle over here is trivial, and a vector bundle that is isomorphic to a trivial vector bundle is also trivial. So in particular, we deduce that psi is a trivial vector bundle. Okay. A theorem that is related to the previous one is this covering homotopy theorem. We consider a morphism capital F of vector bundles covering a map F between their base spaces. So we have here uh, capital F, small f, M1, M0, and the vertical maps are the projections associated to the vector bundles psi zero and psi one respectively, right? Now we consider a homotopy H of F. That means that a small h of x zero is equal to small f of x for every x in M0, right? And what happens is that this homotopy H can be lifted to a homotopy capital H, okay, of maps of morphisms of vector bundles. Uh, that uh, is, is a homotopy of F, so that implies that H of uh, W zero is equal to capital F of W for every W that belongs to psi zero, right? And that it is going to cover the map H. And this is related as usual to this property that we have for vector bundles defined in the product of uh, a manifold and an interval that says that this, um, these vector bundles are always trivial in the direction of the interval. This is uh, another, another consequence of that idea, okay? So in this lecture, we saw that every vector bundle over a contractible manifold is always trivial. And in order to prove that, we use results of previous lectures together with a very interesting construction associated to vector bundles and maps which is the pullback of a vector bundle by a map. In the next lecture, we are going to switch topics. We are going to consider orientation of vector bundles. That is a very important topic because for instance, we need to define orientation of vector bundles in order to define the degree of a map between two differentiable manifolds of the same dimension. Thank you for your attention.